We have a lot of computers here at the Vintage Geek Museum, but the rarest one by far is the Centurion Micro Plus. And today we're going to take our first look at it here on Vintage Geek. Just a quick reminder, if you like vintage computers and vintage technology, please like and subscribe. It's going to help us a lot, and I encourage you to go to VintageGeek.com and consider becoming a member. It's going to help us grow here at the Vintage Geek Museum and channel. So back when we were first starting the collection that would become the Vintage Geek Museum, I had some rare opportunities to go through entire collections that people had from various sources. One of those was a former Radio Shack dealer that was actually in Florida. I'm not sure where the original store was, but there was basically an entire storage unit full of various computer components, software, and accessories. And we got a lot of really rare finds from that particular voyage. But one that really stands out more than any other is the Centurion system that I have with me here today. Now, when I saw this computer in the storage unit, first and foremost, I thought it was one of the most unique systems that I had ever seen. I had only seen the terminal at that point. The blue coloring on this terminal is different than anything I've seen before. And while it did look familiar, I've seen other data terminals like it, it was definitely distinctive. I saw the name Centurion on it, and I had no idea what that was, not anything that I had ever heard of. The only thing, honestly, that popped into my mind at the time was Kurt Russell in used cars uh, pitching his Centurion convertible for someone to buy. So Stan, you, uh, you want to buy this Buick Centurion, huh? Good choice. Smart man, you got good taste, I'll tell you something a lot of people don't have these days. Nice to see somebody finally walk on this lot who knows a good car when he sees one, I'll tell you. But uh, obviously that is not the case. I did a little bit of research on Centurion at the time and found very little, if anything, on the internet. I think there may have been one Google link that had an old brochure or some kind of sales literature about Centurion and the business systems that were made in Texas, but there really wasn't a whole lot on it at the time. And when I dove into this further and found the rest of the system, including the CPU and the drive unit, which by the way is very heavy, so uh, I don't recommend lifting these things and moving them around too freely. <laughs> I still was unable to find a lot of documentation on this, if any. So I kind of had to put this aside for a while. The terminal has always been prominent in our museum space. We've had it featured in pictures just because it stands out so much. And because of that, we actually have found more information thanks to another excellent YouTube channel out there called Usagi Electric. I was completely unaware of this channel until some of our viewers, thank you very much, let us know about it in the comments after we had our museum opening video where we featured this prominently on the website and some of the footage. So the great news here is that there is a developing community, thanks to David's channel, about this system and the software for it. Now he's actually working on a full mini computer system. This is actually a much smaller system, and I'm gonna get into that in a minute. But I just wanna say, first and foremost, shout out to David and Usagi Electric, and of course, all of the fine followers out there that have recommended this to us, because I think now we're going to be able to really get to the bottom of this classic machine and find out more about it. I do wanna mention here that I am by no means an expert on Centurion. There's probably Probably going to be some things I get wrong here, but I'm going to do the best that I can. Centurion was a company that made business computers. They were based in Texas, and their 70s models and some of the things that the other YouTube channel are working on were full mini computer setups. Now, mini computers are not normally what we cover here on the channel. We're typically into microcomputers. The difference is that mini computers really came after the giant tube based computers of the 50s, 60s, and going into the 70s, and they were made smaller because of the use of discrete components, transistors, and ICs, whereas their tube counterparts took up entire rooms worth of space, the mini computers could be fit into smaller cabinets. It's funny to call them mini now because they are still giant compared to today's computers, but they're worth noting that Centurion was very heavily involved in that field and there's a lot of other content on YouTube about their mini systems which I highly recommend checking out. Our system is the Centurion Micro Plus. Now, if I understand this correctly, Centurion was making a move towards smaller systems, not to replace a microcomputer like an IBM PC, but just to have a smaller form factor and be able to fit better in the office environment. The Micro Plus, as I have read, had some built-in software for doing standard business functions, things like accounting, spreadsheets, word processing, that kind of thing. It also probably came with a printer, and from what I understand, the price point on this system in its kind of basic configuration was about thirteen dollars to $14,000. You're thinking, can I afford to buy a car like this? Huh? Am I right? Seriously, Stan, you can't afford not to buy a car like this. Again, this is all based on the limited amount of data that I have currently, but it was definitely a business-grade system, and and involved at least one terminal, sometimes more, and it involved a CPU and a drive case. We have the three components for our system here. 
the actual terminal, which was made by a different company. We'll talk about that in a minute. We have the CPU unit and we have the drive unit, which appears to have a fixed disk drive as well as an eight inch floppy drive in it. So what I wanna do now is take a closer look at the three components that we have and see what's inside these, see how they're put together so that we have a little bit better idea with what we're working with so that hopefully in an upcoming video, we can actually work with our friends at Usagi Electric to actually get this system off the ground and running. We'll start out with the actual data terminal part of the system here. Now, this is the terminal that we got in our original find at this particular storage unit. Since then, we have actually discovered there's a second one of these, and I believe it's identical, but we do not have that unit yet. This particular terminal was not made by Centurion. It was actually made by ADDS, Applied Digital Data Systems. This particular terminal is called the Regent 40, and it was a pretty common terminal from what I understand. I actually remember seeing one of these terminals when I was young at, I can't remember what business it was, but they actually had a version of this that had a gray faceplate and a different logo on the front. So I think that ADDS was making terminals for different companies and kind of customizing the color scheme and so forth. But this one obviously is distinctive with its blue faceplate. It's got the Centurion logo in prominence and it's a nice looking terminal overall. We have cleaned the exterior of this, but we have not actually gotten in the inside of it at all. I'm probably not going to do that today, but it is worth noting that we will be digging into this at some point. The keyboard on this terminal has a decent feel to it. The keys have a good range of motion. Everything feels like it's in pretty Pretty good shape and it looks pretty clean overall. There's kind of a mystery key on it though, this white key right in the uh, kind of center of things over here next to the P key. I'm not really sure why that's a different color if that key was replaced at some point. Maybe they had an issue with one of the buttons, I'm not sure. The only other key that has that coloring on the keyboard is the arrow key, which is to the right of the numeric pad. So again, not sure what that's about. You've got some function keys across the top. You've got uh, your standard set of keys for letters and numbers. And then you also have some kind of different keys that are more terminal specific, like you have a new line key rather than a return key. There's a separate key for line feed. I think one of the options in this terminal was to have auto line feed on or off. So there's some interesting options on the terminal for sure. There's a little bit of burn in in the screen that you can see if you look closely, but it's not bad. I would imagine that this terminal may work completely fine. I don't know yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to finding out. Looking at the back of the terminal, it's pretty basic. You've got a couple of DB25 connectors. One of them is labeled EIA and current loop. The other one is an auxiliary connector, which I'm not exactly sure what that's for. There's a rotary contrast control, which I assume is self-explanatory. Power connector, there's a power cord and a fuse. We're missing the fuse holder right now, so I'm gonna have to find one of those to actually get this working at some point. And of course, there is a large selection of dip switches that control different functions of the terminal. Now, watching some of the other videos out there on the Centurion, those dip switches are very important because if they're not set the right way, you're never gonna be able to communicate with the system. I have to presume these are probably correct though because these pieces and components did all come together. I did not receive the matching cable that goes from the terminal to the system, but all the rest of the cables between the chassis were intact and included with it. So I have no reason to believe that those won't be right, but it's worth taking a look at them anyway. The one thing I did notice specifically on the dip switches though, is that it doesn't seem like this one has the option for the auto echo, which I know that was covered in one of the other videos to be able to see if the terminal works locally by typing on it and seeing it on the screen. So maybe that's a built-in function on this particular model. I'm not sure, but that's one of the things we'll have to find out once we actually get this system to power on at some point. So I'm gonna make it easy on you. When you add this whole thing up, taking into account inflation rate, insurance savings, gas savings, ease and comfort, you're gonna come out $10,000 ahead after making this deal. Well, the rest is alone of owning a Buick Centurion convertible can't even measure in terms of dollars and cents, am I right? That was our first look at the Centurion Micro Plus system we have at the Vintage Geek Museum. Thanks for joining us on this journey today. We've got a lot more content to come on this system. As I mentioned, uh, we've been in touch with David at Usagi Electric, who has become very expert on the system, as well as Ken Romaine, who actually worked for Centurion for over a decade, as I understand it, and has all of the details on the Micro Plus system. System. He actually, I believe, worked on the design of this system. So I'm really excited to bring the experts in and get a little bit more familiar with how the system might work. And if we can get the system up and running, I'm really excited to find out. And uh, thanks to everyone who made those connections happen for us. All of our viewers that uh, brought up the other channel and the info on the Centurion, we really appreciate you being involved. And speaking of being involved, it would help us a lot if you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, but it helps us even more if you go to vintagegeek.com and consider becoming a member. When you're a member, you have access to all of our video content commercial free. You get discounted prices on admission to the museum, extra content, and a whole lot more. You can check all that out at vintagegeek.com. Until next time, I'm Aaron, and this has been Vintage Geek. Ah!